Now that we have an index containing a representative set of data for our project, it is time to learn how to effectively query Elasticsearch. In this section, we will learn about several types of searches, including simple searches, filters, which return documents without scoring them for faster performance, and compound queries. In this video, we are going to take a deeper look at the structure of query objects, as well as learning about the basic types of queries, how they work, and when you might want to implement one over the other. We will primarily be looking at what is unique about each type, as opposed to going into minute detail about their individual properties. While we won't use every type in our final application, it is important to understand the types of queries that are available in Elasticsearch. The primary way of interacting with Elasticsearch from a client-side application is through its query DSL, or domain-specific language. In the case of Elasticsearch, this is a robust JSON API endpoint. One of the benefits of the query DSL is that it allows us to represent a query as a JSON object, rather than having to pass in each parameter in one long concatenated string. This means that the query itself is much cleaner, making it easier to create and understand. The query DSL shines once we start getting into some of the more advanced queries that Elasticsearch supports. Compared to the standard format, passing an object to the query DSL is well structured. You can see that it is much cleaner and more readable, especially once the requests become more complex. Elasticsearch also maintains many useful language-specific clients that are written for languages ranging from Java to Go. If JavaScript isn't your preferred stack, you should definitely check them out. The Elasticsearch API defines several key kinds of text matching queries, including term, match, fuzzy, more like this, and common terms. Terms. A term query is used for direct text matching. There is a separate query type for a single term versus multi-terms, which allows you to pass in an array of terms. The main thing to understand about term queries is that no analysis is done on the query string and it will only return any documents from the index that are identical matches of the given terms. For instance, if you search for an uppercase title that was indexed as lowercase, it will not be returned. The match query type is a good general purpose query because it uses the same analyzing chain as the field that is being searched. This fixes the problem that we saw with the terms query where a search keyword would not return any documents because the two strings were not interpreted the same way, resulting in a mismatch. Keep in mind that this is not the case when no specific field is being targeted by the match query. Match queries can be used to find numbers, dates, and strings, among others. Match query interprets each keyword in the query string as an array of terms, joined by Boolean logic. Unless specified otherwise, a search for blue dress will be interpreted as blue or dress. In other words, the query type defaults to or. Of course, you can either change this to end or increase the minimum match setting to require more words from the query string to match a given document. Multi-match query type goes one step further to allow you to define multiple fields to search over. In addition to the regular batch functionality, there are also variants for matching phrases and prefixes. These can be written as either the root query type or as a node within the main match object. Phrase matches, the keywords must occur next to each other rather than separately within the same document. How far apart the words can be and still be considered a phrase is called the slop setting. A slop of one means that the words can occur up to one word away from each other. Elasticsearch also has a number of span query types that provide more control of their slop parameters. Finally, prefix matches allow us to match documents that start with the query keywords. This is useful for generating results before the full string has been entered, as in the case of autocomplete. In order to match the start of a phrase, use the match phrase prefix. Range queries can be used to return documents that fall within a span of accepted matches. Numbers are the most common example. Ranges can also work with dates. Ranges accept greater than, greater than equals, less than, and less than than equals. 
For instance, we could find all of the books that have been published in the last five years. We could also have a search that only returned books published between 2010 and 2012. Filters. Unlike full queries, filters do not assign a score to the returned documents, so they can be extremely fast and computationally efficient to return. Because filters are binary, either a document is within the set or it isn't, they can be great for narrowing down a result set before running a more complex query. Here we are combining a normal query with a filter using the filtered query. In addition, filters are also heavily cached so that other queries can take advantage of them without performance overhead. Filters can be used to check if a document exists or is missing, whether it has parents and or children, what type it is, and whether one of its fields falls within a geographic shape, among others. Filters can also contain subqueries. As you can see, filters are a very robust and good choice if you're looking to create an unranked list of documents. Once you have used filters to generate a subset of documents, you can use another query to score each document. In short, if you don't need to rank documents by score, always use a filter query because of its inherent speed. In this video, we've covered a number of different types of queries and some of the basic uses for them. Hopefully now you have a general understanding of some of the different benefits of each and an idea of when to use one type over another. In the next video, we are going to learn about some more specific query types.